Vodafone presents the pre-match. The pre-match is here, and we are about ready to get into our semi-final, featuring the hometown heroes of Astralis, taking on Mouse Sports here live in a cut in the city of Uden. So welcome back. My name is Trace Dunnasaranthus. I will be your desk host alongside of one great Dane and a great Finn over there. He's not a shark. He's not a fish of any kind, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> welcome back, guys. We've got Pimp and Natu. What's up? What's up? Guys, I think we're about ready to kick off our first semifinal. I mean, we're almost ready to get into the nitty gritty, almost ready to talk about this pound for pound. And I'm pretty sure that everybody out there in Uthens is thinking the same thing. Yeah, I think this one is going to be a, a great one, obviously, for the Danish fans out there. We have a, a whole stadium, a whole arena filled up with Danish fanboys right now, and Astralis are the heavy favorites coming into this one. You cannot argue against that. I made a little statistic uh, research before going into this one. They have played 17 maps against each other uh, in recent times, and Astralis have won 16 of those maps, and the one loss well. they had was in a best of three series they won anyway. So Mouseports haven't really been able to get it done against Astralis ever. Well, I mean, <laughs> to put that into perspective, with this lineup on land for Astralis, has won 113 games or maps and just lost 33 in total. So, I mean, you know. Listen, finding one map in a best of three series might seem like a remarkable feat for teams in 2018. Taking on Astralis at the very least, and yes, that's right, the past six matches have gone in their way. It's pretty handedly, might I add. It's not even really been too much of a contest. Getting uh, kind of close to the BO1. Yeah, I mean, 2-0 is only 2-0, but like I said, at ECS, you know, the, the maps were really, really close. They only just recently played one another, so they know each other really well. I, it, it's it's that, The fact is that, you know, uh, both of these teams have some really, really good closers, but Astralis just have better closers. Let's be honest. They they have the players like Device coming in, Sipnix, who can just win out right around in a situation that's already looking dire. So that's like the one fundamental thing that's really really differ, differentiating these two in the end because the skill level is really high on most sports and they can execute properly. They can play some proper good Counter Strike when they're on their day, but. Astralis has had a couple inches more. And I think that's an interesting topic you bring up, because you're right, when you when you talk about the individuals on mouse board, you have guys like Oscar, Rubs, and Sonny being extremely individual skilled players, but they just haven't been able to get it done against Astralis. I did some research as well in terms of how the rating adds up against this current Astralis lineup, and Oscar is currently averaging 0 0.80, uh, 88 rating against Astralis, where his uh, entire 2018 has been 1.10. So there's something Astralis quite is doing to, yeah. quite the difference, something they do to shut him down, basically. Same story for Sonny. He's the best player of mouse sports. He's doing an incredible job against everyone else besides Astralis. They've found a key to close those two down. And if they can keep doing that, I'm having a hard time seeing who for mouse sports needs to step up. Who's, who's the best team using utility? Astralis. There's your answer why Oscar is being nullified. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really pushing Oscar out of fights, not even letting him get in them in the first place is going to be a difference breaker. When we're looking at Oscar yesterday, he was really just shutting down the office. He's, yeah, and he is really good at finding those windows of opportunities, little gaps that he can make an aggressive play. But Ashal is just the kind of team that will punish every single time when you try to do plays like that. So you don't really get to dominate the server as much. Yeah, I definitely agree, and, and that is the big problem with mouse sports. I think we had one of the games yesterday where we had a little Telestrator segment as well, where we sort of highlighted the, how they are disjointing when they attack bomb sites, you know, how they, the, the chemistry between the players is not necessarily there to 100%. And as you said, the individual skill may add up against the Astralis players. I would not necessarily say that the individual skill from Astralis compared to mouse sports is a big difference. It's the way they play off each other and the way they play with each other that is the big difference. And also, I feel like for mouse sports, it's, they're their big, biggest enemy a lot of the times just because of the fact that, you know, that they, they'll have like on a map like Train, for example, they'll have some really, really good execute so towards the other bomb site, and they'll come out from multiple angles simultaneously. But sometimes there's just like a half a second gap between when they're pushing in from Z Connector, when they're coming out a ladder, and it's not happening together. So they're not able to trade effectively afterwards, and they just outright lose first two men, and they're in a situation where they just don't have a punching power to get into the bomb site. So there's a massive difference between that mouse that can do things correctly and a mouse that just doesn't seem to be dialed in. And I think that comes down to where I think the biggest difference between the two teams are right now, the in-game lead position. You have Chris J from Mouseports. By no means is he a bad in-game leader. I think he's done a, a tremendous job with this Mouseports line of getting them to where they are today, but he's not a Glaive. I think that by many, Glaive is the best in-game leader, considered the best in-game leader in the world. Fracking-wise, he's good. Understanding-wise, he's good. I had the honor to play with him as well. He basically teaches me everything I know about Counter-Strike to this date. And I can tell you, he has the sixth sense for Counter-Strike that I haven't seen anyone else have at this level. So Chris J, 
despite being a good in-game leader, you can't go up against a guy like Glaive. He's just one step ahead all the time. But at least with Astralis and at least with Glaive, there's certainly a discussion to be had about the tools that he has in his in his pouch, because yes. they can seemingly get the job done in any situation. There's a bit of a culture difference there between Mouse Sports and, and Astralis, even looking from outside in. You know, Astralis, they, their work ethic is about them thinking of it as a job. You know, they, they, they don't leave any stone in turn. They do everything in their power to do well. Uh, and Zonic is seemingly doing a really, really good job, as is all of basically uh, uh, everyone in the behind in, in Astralis. So, whereas Mouse Sports for me strikes more like, you know, five guys going in, doing their thing, and depends on, you know, if their morning coffee was the right type, <laughs> if they're going to be playing well or not. If the temperature was just right. Well, the temperature is just right for this. It's been a long year for Astralis, a very, very successful one that all Danes can rally behind and get behind as we go into our first semifinal. We're going to have that opportunity to hear a little bit about that year from the man himself, Mr. Device. Uditsa, make some noise for this man. It's like a fairy tale. It's been probably the best season of my and our lives, so I'm not happy that it's being put on hold, but I don't think it's gonna end anytime soon. I think the roster change came at a very important moment. We weren't ready to do a roster change at that point, but I think it was the right time. Uh, first of all, it was the right time, and second of all, he just brings a really good mood, and he's always uh, very motivated. It's very early in his career, so it's always very nice to get someone in the team that has more motivation than you, that will remind you of who you were some years ago when you had that motivation as well. So that was an eye-opener for me, at least. On top of that, we've just been working so incredibly hard, and, and I'm just proud to be a part of this team. I never really felt like we got off track in Sydney. It was just a very close game, and sometimes you need to have that little edge, right? In Cologne, we lost against a really well-playing Navi, and, and the fact is, even though you're the best team in the world, you don't win 100% of your matches. You maybe win 80% of your matches. So I feel like our performance throughout the year has been convincing in some way, and I've never really doubted my team or myself at any point. I think what matters most to us about the Intel Grand Slam is the prestige about it. It's not about winning a million dollars for us, it's more about doing something no other team has done before. I think that's a great step in creating a very unique legacy for Astralis. That's why I cherish it and I feel very excited to be here because it's a huge opportunity to, to do something that has never been done before. And at 23 years old, Device has done it twice over. He's a two-time major champion. And Mr. Nikolai does not looking to be slowing down here for you and Uthin. So we're not going to be doing that either. In fact, Device is a very instrumental part of the success of Team Astralis this year. Especially when they go up against Mouse Sports. Doing my research, I found out that he's the player on the server that performs best when these two teams are meeting. With the 10 players on the server, with these two lineup going up against each other, Device, device sorry, is averaging a rating of 1.19, which is incredibly high, consistently doing that over and over again. He's so calm, he's so composed, and you saw that in the interview as well. He is by far one of the best players in the world, and if he can keep that up, Mouse Sports again, they need Oscar, they need somebody to sh shut him down, and I don't see who that is, Nato. I, neither do I, honestly. I mean, the growth story of Device as a, as a player in just going through the history of Counter-Strike, he, he used to be a player that would kind of choke in, in big matches and not being able to really show what he's capable of in, in these type of scenarios where he's in a semi-final of a big tournament to then now turn into a player who you can always rely on, you can always count on, and he's really found his mojo and just the way that he, he needs to play for him to extract what he has to offer, and that's something phenomenal that he, he does have to offer. Well, here's what we have to offer you, Uthin. So it's time to find out where we're going to be gaming today. We do have three maps to decide on here, and the vetoes are going to start flying in any second, guys. Win conditions for Mouse Sports on this veto. Mouse Sports is going to remove Overpass. There's no doubt about that. Astralis is getting rid of cash, so let's just put that down. You know, you can see it on your screen as well. No surprises here. Where it gets interesting, Nato, is whatever. Astralis want to keep on going with their nuke pick, or if they're moving towards something like Inferno. Play, we play did, with faith. Play with faith, because we did see Mouse Sports <laughs> go up against MIBR and Inferno, and that looked very lacking. Cluster. They lost 16 to 6, and we know Astralis' best map is probably Inferno combined with Nuke. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh wow, very very close on Nuke. Go. Previous time, so yeah, we see Inferno coming in from Astralis. I mean, this is probably I don't know how most sports were prepared for this one here. I mean, potentially, but 
considering the win streak you have as a shot list, you're, you're kind of also thinking, you know, it's bound to change at some point, and Mouseport has been very, very close from beating a shot list. But they have to try to get that nuke ban in there. Nobody wants to tackle Astralis on nuke, and that's what's going to happen. We do have our first three maps of today, Mirage Inferno and Dust2 for our first semi-final. Taking a look at some of these numbers, they're going to speak for themselves, Astralis and Mouseports. Here on a, a very good reasoning, because both of these teams definitely can put up a fight, one just having been known for having an excellent year. Let's not forget that the one map Astralis have lost this tournament so far has been Mirage, and that was against Hellraisers, which arguably is a weaker opponent than Mouseport. So the fact that we already have seen a little bit of weakness on this map from Astralis looks good for Mouseport, you know, and they should be feeling comfortable if they've done the right preparation and if they can get the X factor of this map coming in. Sonny is by far the best player on Mirage, together with Oscar in my eyes. Usually, yeah. Mirage, and that's what they need to get going. They definitely do. I mean, last time out they played on Mirage, it was a 16-14, right? So that's a close affair. Charlotte's even winning the piss around of T-side only getting five T rounds. So, I mean, there's definitely a, uh, it should be a good contest. It could be a good contest, but we're all going to be starting it off with Mirage. We told you the map, Vitos. We told you where we're going to go. And in fact, we're going to start to center our discussion around that first map. Mirage being just that, guys, what can we look to expect? I mean, I, I expect Astralis to struggle a little bit, to be honest. I think it's the one map where they're still showcasing some weaknesses. Uh, I think Astralis is a team that currently, you know, have a, a deep map pool. Obviously, they do not play the map of cash, and that's fine. But when it comes to Mirage, it's, it's the one map we have seen them struggle a little bit on. We saw it against Hellraisers. We saw it in some of the previous tournaments. When they do lose on, on certain maps, it is often on Mirage, and it's after a lackluster CT side. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's the kind of map where Astralis likes to play that narrative type of a T, uh, T side where, let's say, if they do win like a pistol round, they'll, they'll try to go for a sneaky, high impact, fast paced, hit towards a B bomb set with a couple of fall flash coming in. You're trying to kind of apply the pressure straight away instead of going for the more methodical approach of trying to go for mid control and, and kind of start building uh, that kind of fear in the CT side. Well, they're going to have to build it all day long. And Uthens, uh, Astralis may or may not need your help, but Mouse Sports could use all the help they can get here in tackling this adversary. We're going to be jumping into our first matchup rather quickly. And when we do that, it's going to be a semi-final bout between Astralis and Mouse Sports here in the lovely city of Uthens. So let's make some noise and get right into this bad boy soon. It's your whole life compressed into one night. Don't stuff your shoulders the moment depends on you. Time to choose, you got one shot. I'm extremely happy that we have made it to the semifinal. I don't know, we've played against all the teams here. There's not a team here we haven't played against. And I think if we just do our preparations and play the way we know we can do, um, then I think we can take on anyone. Playing against Australis, I would say it's no pressure for us, but there is always like uh, in this intense round when you have like advantage against them and uh, stuff like this, I feel like sometimes we are like scared to win or maybe we're afraid to lose, but um, I would say it's not pressure, but it's like some sort of a mental block which we had before. Like we had our chances to at least take maps against them in the past months, but we just couldn't. But I feel like since it's last tournament of the year that uh, we're like ready. I think Mouseports has actually played really well this tournament. We've done our preparation. Danny, our coach, is probably the one that keeps our head the highest. He's really good at like comforting you, saying like you just have to like you know believe in yourself and stop worrying about it. If you if you have a bad game, then start thinking a little bit about how can you support your team in, in other ways. I think they are like the example right now, uh, as they've been like last uh, eight months or so. So obviously I respect them and I think that they're the world's best team right now. But uh, as a player, when I go when I play against them, I feel like I can win. But uh, we just need to do it together as a team. Uh, yeah. We, we are gonna fight. Obviously, getting closer and closer to the, to the Grand Slam is, is, is something really great. And obviously, everyone in the team is really happy about it, but it's not something to be focused on. We try to see this tournament as any other tournament. And I think that is why we've gotten so far in, in, in a lot of tournaments is that we don't put too much pressure on ourselves. And if we do, we try to put it to something positive. I mean, we don't have a home crowd with Mo, so I would say that it's pushing us because everybody wants them to win so much. And when we hear them cheering uh, against us, uh, uh, that at least in the past gave us like more fire. And I feel like that, that that's going to put some pressure as well on their shoulders.
sort of old spot. This becomes incredibly dangerous. Oh, what? Out of nowhere! This corner, and that's the second throw of the smoke. Okay, what? Spam in the fan chamber. No one's gonna get that. Oh, what? Look at Russell, he fights too. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's got JW. He's looking for the aces. They jump up, and he's got it. All right, and then where are we dropping, boys? Because it's day two of the Season 8 Grand Finals here in Odense. Who's ready for some Counter-Strike? I don't think I've been more excited for Paris semi-finals as we're here in the Jim Warhol. We've got a packed house, and we have got four teams that want to get close to this trophy. Two semi-finals, best of threes, and the first one. It's a doozy. We know one of the teams. We know the other team as well. Because one team is going for a million dollars if they win here. But their opponents first walking in here to a packed out stadium. Please welcome, it is my friends, Mouse Sports. Mouse Sports walking into the Lions Den here, taking on a team with fanatical hometown support. Yesterday against the Renegades, they were almost down and out, but they fought back and started to look like a team that could win here in Udens. We know they've got the skills individually. Do they have the skills to take on a team and break the hearts of 10,000 people, possibly, crammed in to this war hall? But it's now time to meet their opponents. They are the number one team in the world. They've won everything. They're going for the Intel Grand Slam. Ladies and gentlemen, quite please. Please welcome Astralis. <laughs> They're a team with no weak links. We know that when they perform, when they perform, they can destroy absolutely anybody on this planet with the crowd behind them as well. They are here to take home this trophy. Winning against Mouse Sports will get them one step closer to that Intel Grand Slam. And if they do play off of that, tomorrow will be the biggest game of Counter-Strike ever on planet Earth. Now it's time to find out who you think is going to win this. And I know it sounds like a silly question, but we've got to check. Is it Mouse Sports? Is it Astralis? I think we know who you want to win. Guys, take to your computers. Let's get this crowd ready. I want to hear everyone on the floor, just down here. Are you ready? Yeah. What about in the back? Are you ready? Yeah. Everyone here, are we ready? Let's get it on! Thank you, Mr. OJ. You have certainly riled them up down there. The city of Udensa uh, and all the surrounding have. areas are ready to get this party underway, which is just about what we're going to do here for our first semifinal, featuring in the map of Mirage between Astralis and Mouse Sports. Now, guys, when we start to focus heavy on here on Mirage, let's start talking about how this is all going to go down. 
I think this is going to be a great game in Counter-Strike, first of all. There's two, so much skill, once again on the server, that it should be a lot of fun. Just watching the, that walk-in from Mashal is, I think for them, it's more about even just kind of slowing down their preparation a little bit so that they're not too excited, because obviously mm -hmm. that can be a bit of an issue as well, uh, considering they're playing against, you know, in front of their home crowd, they're on their way to for a potential $1 million Intel Grand Slam, so... Uh, I think this is going to be one heck of a party. There's no doubt that the pressure is immense, as you said. And let's not forget, we haven't touched upon it yet, but Astralis have never been able to win on home soil. They failed the Blast Pro in Copenhagen. Yes. They failed here last year, so this would be the sort of resurgence for them. They're in the semifinal. They have looked, you know, pretty good so far in the tournament. Mousebots is seemingly not looking to the best right now, so everything points in the direction of Astralis. This would be a huge disappointment if they're not able to claim that final spot. Yeah, it's hard to not give the edge to Astralis as they have come into the season riding high. They've had a comfortable year thus far, and it doesn't look to be slowing down right now. One thing that I think they might have in their pocket going into this matchup is just that. They're able to instill fear in whoever they play, no matter who they're playing, because they're Astralis. It's yeah. insanity, isn't it? I mean, it's it's when you obviously when you're a player, you don't really think about it. Like I think Sunny put it really well that when you're playing against the best team in the world, yes, but you still think on the server that you're gonna win. But it's so much more frustrating even then when you're losing a lot of those close rounds as they did in the previous matchup between these two teams, where you just see well again a player like Device, player like Tupnix, Magix, anyone on that lineup pretty much just coming in, getting that crucial double kill in like a three on three situation that could have swung the whole map in your favor. So it's it's a really, really tall order to play against a team like Astralis. It's also the play style you face when you're facing Astralis, right? One thing is going up against a team like Face if you're Mousebots and you're feeling, all right, we're winning the duels or we're losing the duels. We can do better in the next duel and we'll try to win out the game. Whereas if you're playing Astralis, it's so frustrating. I'm sure you can attest to it, Trace, you as well, when you're playing your matchmaking games. It's so annoying <laughs> to die when you're getting blinded, when you're getting smoked yeah. out, when you're getting flushed out of the positions you want to be in. Astralis is so good at interrupting and interfering with the opponent's strategies and the way they want to play and just do their own thing. So one thing is, you know, acknowledging the fact that you're playing some of the best players in the world, another one is facing the best team player in the world as well. It's super frustrating. It's Like I said, it's hard to not give the edge to Astralis given all the parameters here. A, yes, you're the best in the world. You've had the best year that Counter-Strike has seen in a long shot. Uh, you have this entire city of Uditsa behind your back, <laughs> ready, to, ready to grab the pitchforks, ready to grab the spears and, and go to the defense of Astralis. But I guess if you're Mouse Sports, you have the map picked up from Mirage. Yeah, I, and, and the, the, you'll see in this match probably, I mean, just the amount of respect that Mouse Sports will give Astralis' mid, mid control on, on the T side. When Astralis is playing at T side, you'll see Mouse Sports just basically turn on the bomb side and force Astralis to try to execute to the bomb side. That's just telling you the fact that it's so hard to time correctly a peak in the middle when you're playing against Astralis' T side. I'm afraid you're right. I'm afraid they are going to show a lot of respect to Astralis, right? But what I want to see from Mouse Sports, what I want to see Oscar do, what I want to see Sonny do is play that careless counter strike, play the heads up counter strike, get in their faces and see if you can get into Astralis' head, win the initial duels and put some pressure on Astralis. Let's not forget that they have never won on home soil, they have the immense pressure on them right now, they did lose Mirage to Hellraisers early on this tournament. It's uh, almost unbeatable Astralis, but not to the extent where you can't beat them, Trace. Well, they can be beaten. You have to remember at the end of the day, they are humans. This is a team that is the best in the world without a shadow of a doubt, and it seems Seems like all of Denmark seems to think the same thing. Now, I have to ask you guys going into this first map of Mirage, I have to ask you about a prediction on Mirage. Let's go ahead and start with you, Natu. I want to be uh, adventurous here and hope that finally Mouseforge actually is, at least manages to take a map from Astralis because last time the outing it was so close. So I'm, I'm having, favoring my Finnish friend Sunny here for the first map. Jacob. It will be the first time uh, in 11 games that Mouseports would have to win a map against Astralis. I'm afraid to uh, to tell the guys out there, I'm afraid to tell you, Trace, it's going to be Astralis, but I do want to give Mouseports a lot of props. I think they're a great team, and I think it's going to be very close, and it is going to come down to the narrow. Thank you very much. And the one thing that I have to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready? Jacob, are they ready? Quick, hey, Owensa. Hey, Cloud. Boom, there you have it. Let's make some noise, Udinsa. It's time to get into our first semi-final, and we're ready to get her going. It's time to jump into Mirage rather quickly, and we're gonna be doing just that. It's gonna be Hugo and Harry to take it away from here, and let's get this underway. From Alborg to Copenhagen, the Danes have come out in full force for this one. Astralis versus Mouse Sports in the semi-finals. And it is packed in here. The atmosphere is unreal. They're down on that stage 
We're getting ready to head to this first map. Hugo, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great, Harry, but if I was in the mouse sports seats right now, I think they've got to be a little bit worried. This has been an up and down tournament for them. On the other side of things, Astralis have looked damn good as they always do. And now it is the ultimate test. Now it is the chance for mouse sports to try and knock down the, uh, the, the gods of CS right now. And I think that is a statement that no one can disagree with. Astralis are looking hot and with the home crowd in front of them, things are about to get very, very dirty. Oh, most definitely. Let's not forget, I mean, they're also vying for that slot, you know, taking home the title for the Intel Grand Slam. That's the goal here. They want to try and cement their place in the finals by winning this best of three and then taking home that extra million dollar paycheck at the end of the day. They do have this home crowd behind them. Last time they were here in Denmark, it wasn't that hero story, right? They played at Blast Pro Copenhagen and they went out in third. They're looking to try and do right, though, by the Danes down in the audience this time around. And coming through the upper bracket as well, this team has not faced a lot, uh, loss yet here in Udense. So I, I think if you're going to keep on with a flawless streak, this would be a good time to do it. Get yourself to that grand final spot. Face the winner of MIPR Liquid, which will be up later on today, the second semi-final. But that's a, a whole game for another time, Harry. I'd love to know where your eggs are in this basket. Are, are you on the Astralis side of things? I, th I think you have to be, right? It it's so hard to go against them, not only because they're the best team in the world, not only because their form is always impeccable, but because they have all these voices in this arena rallied behind them, Hugo. Uh, the one thing, yeah, exactly. See, look, the one thing that I think maybe could go against them is that the Mouse Sports guys, they, they look good yesterday. Oscar, he was having a great game. If he can keep that up, maybe, but he's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe versus Device. And that is no easy feat. Yeah, Device has been phenomenal this event so far. I mean, he's, uh, he's definitely higher rated in that top five spot right now. But we're going to be getting into this game in just a second. Of course, the pick of Mouse Sports coming in first. This is going to be Mirage, a chance for them to upset. I just have one question. Wouldn't say, are you clear? Well then, let's get this one underway. Astralis versus Mouse Sports, map number one. And the pistol round about to be beginning. Mouse Sports gonna be over on that CT side. Astralis, they've got Zipnix and Glaive buying up the utility. Looking like they're gonna try and focus on mid early on, but Chris J, he's already up on short and he's looking to try and take this early fight. Yeah, the Dutchman making the jump. He's even got Sunny down below as well. Astralis, they're holding for this, but they'll burst out. No flash needed, and Chris J and Sunny, they're gonna be able to start things off. Mouse Sports take that first kill, and Astralis, they decide to duck back. Magis jumping into the B site in the meantime, and he wins a crucial duel. That's the bomb down, though. Chris catching it out from short, and Mouse Sports, they may not have the B site, but they have the information. Yeah, that bomb's been dropped. Astralis, they gotta try and fight for it. Zipnix and Glaive, they don't have armor as well. That's something to bear in mind. They do, however, have this flash and the Molotov to try and help them out. Zipnix, first man back into the bomb site since his teammate fell, and oh. Chris J fighting a lot early on. Mouse Sports gonna be taking the pistol round here. Notably enough, when Chris J walked into this arena, we had Sunny giving out high fives, we had Rops giving out high fives. Chris, no, cold-blooded killer, hands by his side, walking in up against the enemy crowd. And boy, is he gonna start things off strong. Three kills from the Dutchman there in the pistol. And Astralis, probably not a situation they're used to, Harry. Not going to be starting off this map on that strong T side. And again, this is Mouse Sports pick. This is where we expect them to take a map, if possible. But let's see what Astralis have up their sleeves. It's just going to be that second round full eco, giving a bit of respect to Mouse Sports here. P250 and Glocks. So a chance for Mouse Sports to make some money. And they've got the SMGs to do it. Yeah, Astralis, they just want to go for the buy in the next round. That's what they're looking for. Mouse Sports here. A chance, as you say, to build up those bank accounts, get off to a good start. You think back to Mouse Sports' game versus Renegades yesterday, and they did get off to that poor start, right? Map number one, then they grinded their way back into it. If they can find their footing early on here versus Astralis, then this could shape up to be one hell of a series. Already in this round, Rop's going to be opening things up. The rest of the Astralis guys just sitting back, maybe having a bit of a time to talk, figure out how they're going to approach this next buy round. But early on, Mouse Sports are just laying waste to these ecoing players, as we would expect. Yeah, just a bit of a, a drawn-out round of money maker for Mouse Sports. No fear should be had up against these Glocks, although it is Astralis. We've got Stiko now down on B, and he's got to be tasked with three more players running on in. But Glocks are going to be no match for this MP9. The Shredder already taking one. Do three great shot to Dre, but Sunny will be able to drop that bomb, and therefore any chance of Astralis winning that round are out the window. It's Mouse Sports with the 2-0. The question is, Harry, you're stuck in this spot now that you're running SMGs into the third round. Astralis are going to have full rifles. Now, even in an equal situation, Mouse Balls would struggle, but now they're not going to be armed as well. 
We do have that AWP though. Oscar going to be pulling it up in the first buy round here. But we already talked about how difficult it's going to be for him to get going on this map. As mentioned on the desk by Nato, Astralis is so good at shutting down this Czech AWPer. Well, he's got it out early on over here toward middle. Play, even the rest of the gang going to be allowed out as they start to push on down. Astralis picking up the pace down towards short and sunny. He has been boosted up. He's going to drop down and they're going to hear him fall. So Glaive inside this smoke. Oh, can they get spotted? Chris J, good for one. Deep in with the trade. Sunny straight back. And now the pressure's going to fall onto the three players up here in apartments. They don't have that relief effort from short. They don't have the reinforcements. They have to take the fights and win them out. And Steeko making his position knowing. There's it, Nixon with the trade. So they have managed the two on three at the very least. And you can see Device, he's going on a long rotation back through mid. He's going to try and wrap up through short to help out Zipnix up in the apartments. Yeah, he's going to struggle getting out of this apartment with Oscar in the market, holding that window across. So you can see already Zipnix beginning to back out. He can come out through underpass. He can try and support Device in middle, go back to an A play potentially. And the more time that is wasted, the more information Mouseports are going to want to get. So Sunny tries to push up on short, only to be met with Device. He'll give that up, full back. Mouseports still hold onto this man advantage, and now Device going for an even longer rotate. 38 seconds on this clock. Seems like Astralis unsure as to what they want to do in this round, but they'll finally group up in middle. They'll set up for this connector play, I can only assume. And in the meantime, look at Rops. He's pushed up in the sandwich. He's got a great position to try and catch out Astralis once they hit the safe site. But the issue is he's more focused down on the ramp and the palace rather than the real threat, and that is connector. Oscar is starting this rotation background of Rops now waking up to the fact that Astralis are here and Rops is good for one. Zipnik's now left up in the 1v2. But if there's one man that you've grown a trust on Astralis in these clutch situations, it is Zipnik's! There's his third. And now into the 1v1. The bomb is planted for Rap. He's fallen on back. Only Sunny left standing in Zipnik's. Just playing with his food at this point in time. He always looks so comfortable in these situations. And he takes the fight. Zepnix, he gets the job done. Continuing that history of being so good in those clutch situations. That's the start that we want. Of course he does, Harry. What a way to start off this map for Astralis. Mouseports having information, having the three on two. Rops even gets that first kill, but... You can never count out Zipnix. Four kills in that round, 1v3 clutch. Astralis are on the board, and Mouseports, their money's going to be broken. They've gone for the force up into this with a couple of rifles, but no real utility behind it. We have got that AWP, though, on Oscar into this rifle round, and look at this push from Astralis. They are setting up quick into this B-bomb site. It did come down to the one-on-one, -on -one, so Astralis have yet to build up their own money, and you can see they just want to... Speed up the pace, go diving into this B site. There's only one man committed. That's Nico Magis. Runs right past him. He's got to turn around. He can't find the frag. Chris Jay's also chiming in, but there's the double trade from Astralis to keep this site intact. Yeah, these smokes completely cordoning Mouse Sports out of this bomb site. They have to just wait for these to fade before they go for this retake. And you still have Device holding back in the apartments. He's going to be aware that there's no flanks coming through. Instead, the brunt of Mouse Sports' efforts over here in the kitchen with this wrap from Sunny over at Short Dupree. Holding the angle. Sunny creeps into his crosshair and is going to get picked up. And Dupree, not done yet. Astralis, a second round. <laughs> Methodical as ever in their approach. And now tying things up, resetting the economy of Mouse. This is a chance for Astralis to start to break into the lead. Oh, yes, yeah, surely with full USPs coming in for Mouse Sports. Astralis even had the option for that free AWP upgrade off the body of Oscar, but they didn't decide to take it. They'd rather stick with this organ device, the SMG up on Majisk. Mouseport's having to just take a lost round, a guaranteed lost round, especially when you're up against Astralis. Rob's trying to fight in middle. We've got all the USPs here for Mouseports, but they're getting picked apart one by one. Smoke is even down in the window to block off multi-peaks from Mouseports, who will just go rotating onto that B site. A full stack here, but Astralis, they're not known for rushing into bomb sites with no information. I'm sure they're going to be just fine with this. Majisk is also probing that connector, so the deeper he pushes, the more info he gets. And so will Mouseports. They'll push up on short. It's just a firing range. Oh, well, at least the buyers coming back in at four miles in this round. They do have that relief. They could try and get the purchase together. Oscar isn't going to have that AWP. And you think about how key he was yesterday. 
It won't be Opti to give him that weapon. Device still just rocking the Orc. He's not even feeling the Orc right now. He's uh, opting instead for the mid-range rifle. And once again, Astralis, this is like a very, very fast explosion out from the palace. Usually this is reserved to pistol rounds. Not too common to see them try and do this in a rifle, but they're going to go for it. And Rops might get caught out. They barrel on and oh, Goomba stomp, but Rops is still able to pick it up and finds himself another Magisk device. They're doing what they can to keep this round open for Astralis. Glaive in the meantime is up through Connector and he has been able to get by Stiko. So they don't know. The Glaive currently resides on the stairs. He's the X Factor in this round. A fail safe. That bomb very much in the eyes of Chris J. And Oscar's going to start to peel around a joint up with it. Astralis still with a minute and five seconds left to play with here. So plenty of time. Device peaks a little too wide, and Chris J is going to find him. So now it is just Glaive, the man at the helm of this Astralis roster, left up in a 1v3. And they've got a crossfire as well. They've got him locked down at the back of the stairs. He's not going to get more than one. Quick trade from Stiko, and with the man up on short as well, that was going to be easy to contain for Mouse Sports. Astralis still being able to buy up in this round, but Mouse Sports at least showing that the fact they can win rifles despite Astralis just going for these quick executes. That's all it's been, these fast bursts, that quick B play in the, uh, in the second rifle round, the Palace push from three, getting locked down from Rops. Astralis are trying to make this one quick and clinical, but it's three to three and Mouse Sports have got a full buy, so... Their chance to keep things going. Oscar, a lot of damage towards middle, but it is going to be traded back. He's down to 24. In the meantime, Astralis are flashing through smokes on ramp, and Glaive's already gone bounding into the bomb site. The flashbang was good, and Chris J is better. He's going to be able to take that kill. Device unable to trade for the time being. He's looking for something, and oh dear, Device. 80 damage through a smoke. That's got to hurt. I mean... That there, that is just absolutely unreal. Stiko in the meantime, he's got pushing up through the apartments, trying to go for this information play, but he might find something out he wish he didn't. Zipnix is going to get dropped. Stiko continuing to take this fight, and Magisk does manage to pick up the trade. Now on the back of it, Astralis is just going to look to try and explode into this B bomb site with a man so aggressive up in the apps. They're assuming oh, that the reinforcements here from ours will be light, but they are not. Oscar picking up Magisk. Sunny in the meantime as well, peeking in through those lower tunnels. Catches Device unaware, and that leaves Dupree, who, if you remember, was tagged down at the start of this round. And he is going to get discovered and dropped. Mouse Sports retaking the lead here. And this is something that was mentioned on the desk as well. If, if we are going to see Mouse Sports get away with a win here, they've got to play in your face, Counter Strike. They've got to get in the heads of Astralis, and we can just see it in that round. They get a bit of info off of the B push. Sonny, he starts getting aggressive in the lower tunnels, just trying to take every fight they can. Mouse Sports. Forcing Astralis down to an awkward spot when it comes to the money. They've got one rifle and a bit of armor, but that's going to be it here for the Danish guys. Having to hyper or likely give up a fifth round here to Mouse Sports unless Device goes absolutely mental. Chris J, he's going to get flashed to the top of middle. Interesting note, he's not even bought up utility because this role is very expendable. He's going for info, he's going for an early pick, and there's only really Deagles on the other side. He won't commit to it for now, though. Glaive is going to have to be the one to take the fight instead as Chris J ho just holds close, keeping Astralis somewhat contained towards the mid-portion of the map. And this really is their bread and butter. With no utility, it's very difficult to actually get into this spot. Chris J trying to take a kill, but Astralis aren't committing to a fight, and neither is he. Yeah, he knows he doesn't have to go around that corner. He has Sunny here down in mid to help him out, as well as the man uh -oh. on short. But there's Device in the meantime, going to be shutting down Rops. And now, Mouse Sports, they've got to try and divide their efforts. They've got to try and keep an eye on this A-Bob. So they rotate Stiko away. Chris Jay and Sonny still maintaining this crossfire over in the top of mid. Sonny even being allowed to get himself into this little cubby. Zipex going to get oh, no. spotted with Device. Back again with the AK. Going to pick up his second of this round. They shouldn't be ready for Sonny. And oh, they're not. Zipex doesn't have a clue. And now Device. Only on 18 HP, tried to go back, was tempted to go for the trade. In the meantime, the rest of Astralis is starting to push in toward B, but they get sent back thanks to Oscar down on short. Yeah, some great trading from Device, great refragging with his team and bait setups, but they've only got 20 seconds left and they're getting flashed out the underpass. This is very clear, very telegraphed. Mouse Sports know exactly what's going on and Sonny's going to be able to line them up, but Glaive with the Deagle. Oscar tries to respond and that bomb drop might have just won in the round, even with Stiko up on the site. There should be no way Astralis can get back in and just like that, the bomb getting dropped 
is going to be the death warrant sign for Astralis. Five rounds to Mouse Sports, but Harry, that was an eco from Astralis. They had one rifle and they take down four Mouse Sports players. It may not make much effect here, but in the future that can really come back to haunt Mouse Sports. Almost definitely, yeah. That buy is still very much available for the Mouse guys, but it does leave that money in a bit of an awkward spot looking to the future at the very least. The reset is going to be looming over them. Similar tale over in the Astralis camp. But a buy back on the card. Still no AWP on device. That is the one downside to having him survive there in that one-on-one. -on -one. He doesn't get the money. He would have loved to have had that out in this round. But rifles across the board. Double AWPs over on the side of Mouse Sports. So they've got no such problem. And Glaive. There's the opener. Chris J tries to play it smart. But Zipnix in the meantime shutting down another man over here at the ramp. Astralis. Off to a flying start in this round. Glaive not content oh, oh, oh. with the man he found down in mid. Gonna go and sniff out Stiko as well, and in the blink of an eye, there's only one man left towards this A bomb site, which is where that bomb is heading towards right now. All the pressure is gonna fall onto Sunny. Surely this is too much to ask for. Astralis, they're gonna lock down this position. They're aware of the earlier ramp push, and they wanna keep an eye on it again. Zipnix catches that peak. And this bomb can go down in the open. Mouseports have no business in this round. Oscar is gonna be done. He should definitely just try and save this AWP, but has to play somewhat aggressive because otherwise Astralis are going to begin to hunt. He gets spotted. Shot from device gives away his position. Smoke goes down for Oscar, but Mouse Sports, I'm oh, sorry, Astralis, they're still keeping up the pace. They're still hunting this man down through the apartments, through the market, through short. There's nowhere that Oscar is free. And he doesn't even know about Majisk as well. He's closing the distance. Oh, the timing, and there it is. Clean round from Astralis, not a single casualty. They take down the full by Mouse Sports like it was an eco. Yeah, Astralis just like vultures to a corpse. Oscar didn't know, but he was a dead man walking inside of that B bomb site. Mouse Sports, they do go for the buy here. So interesting decision to make. They throw that AWP over onto Oscar. You think back to his form yesterday. He was really the main man stepping up for this Mouse Sports roster, so you understand why. Astralis, they've finally got that AWP out. With that man on your screen, Device going to be feeling happy about this one. Because he does get to have his big green gun back in play. A quick tactical timeout just to make sure everyone in the Astralis cap is on the same page. And we're getting back into this. There is no money left on Mouse. So a victory in this round for Astralis is effectively a two for one. But do you remember when we had that Renegades game yesterday on this exact map between Mouseports and them, it was Mouseports actually winning the game with a, uh, an AWP and single rifle buy with three pistols, they came back from a huge deficit off the back of that round. So these are definitely winnable, very difficult against Astralis, but Oscar's going to be put in a position to succeed, and that Molotov, well, it'll do quite the opposite effect. Glaive shuts him down early on, Device even hits the tag with the AWP, and that AWP is going to get picked up from Sunny, but Mouseports have lost their point, man. Oh, Chris J, spots Glaive, he's able to find him, and no trade just yet. There was Dupree down in low, he's not quite in the position, Device at top mid. Doesn't quite get there in time to spot Chris. This AWP's been juggled now onto the back of Sunny, and maybe he's looking to try and deposit that with Chris J inside of this B bomb site as he does rotate round. They might try and boost him up. And that's what they're gonna do. Sunny put up on top of this boost. Doesn't spot anything just yet. Minute left on this clock, and Astralis setting up over here toward this B bomb site. Oh, no. And now, Sports, the timing couldn't be worse. They've just started to rotate away. They've hedged their bets. They put all their eggs in one basket. And Astralis, they're going to get this B bomb site for free. I think they've realized Stiko is starting to watch his back line as well, and the nades. The flying in nades will give away the position of Astralis, but nice shot from Stiko. Now that they know, this bomb's yet to go down. This gives more time for Mouse Sports to rotate in. They can certainly give this at least a look into the site, considering they don't have much to play with anyway. They've dropped one more man of Astralis, but these T's have already got an into favorable post plants. Up on short is Device. He's scoped in. A slow peek from Chris, and that will spell his demise. Device finding another. Rops is going to pick up that orb, but Stiko is not done just yet. With a second eagle of the round, he's going to close the distance to Device. The barrel of the gun might give away his position, but Device is so fast. Seems like Mouse Sports, every hurdle they climb over, Device is on the other side. And that will solidify the round. That will be the 5-5. There are definitely casualties from Astralis, but a round is a round. Almost certainly now tying things up. Over on the side of Mouse, they are able to hold that AWP going forward along with a rifle over on Sunny, but I just could just tempt them into the buy here. And 
The one issue you're going to have with that is, you know, you lose this round and then you're looking at an eco into the next. So they might just elect to partial buy. They've passed the guns out. They've shared the love around in the team. They have the AWP over on Oscar. AK thrown into the hands of Sunny. Stralis. Going to be picking that AWP up once again over on a device who is sitting top of the board right now, 12 and 3. Steve. Already off to a great start. Stiko having a great round as well is always good for Mouse Sports. If you have the likes of Sunny and Oscar really firing off for their peak, and also Stiko is joining the fray, that could be a bit of a threat for Astralis. And so far, 5-5, five, five, Mouse Sports are bringing the pace into the apartments. Is Stiko? And just like that, he's gone. Majisk picking that up. Oscar getting flashed off, has to hide in the corner, but there's no follow up from Majisk. He's got that man advantage. No reason to overstay his welcome. No need to overstep the mark. Astralis look for a pick somewhere else on the map, and Device may get gifted it as well. You can see Sonny's holding down the line on short, but he's only got an AK, so no reason for him to peek around this corner. He's, he's just edging closer and closer. Device now looking away, going to try and flash his teammates into this ladder room, and Sonny Ooh. does manage to get past Device the first time around. That flash arrives, though, and that allows Dupree to dispatch of Sonny. Makes it look almost too easy, and Glave in with another. Oscar's trying to do what he can from the window, but it's only him and Rops left standing in this round. This shot from Device spots both players, so they know where they are. They know that Rops is over towards A, and Oscar was just in that window room. And for Maz, they're already turning their attention to save. They want to try and hold on to this orb. They've backed off. The only thing that solidified the fact that they haven't saved just yet is that bomb's yet to go down. It's going for the long rotate through apartments, so Mal Sports was still giving it due consideration, just in case Astralis had made some kind of mistake. But it's not going to happen. Device has taken down the AWP, and Rops is doing his best to save it. But Device creeping on in. He's going to miss a follow-up. Deagle out. And Rops, he's only got one chance. He's only got one shot to get this done. But Device hits it first. 14 and 5 on him, Harry. Device is feeling it on his home turf. And Astralis are up around. Yeah, Device not happy that they're trying to walk away with the Zorp. Ends up being like a boomerang. It always comes back to him eventually. Astralis now up 6 to 5. And over in the camp of Maus, they've gone for this buy, but it's not looking great. I mean, they are looking a little bit limited in terms of utility. You don't have the AWP over on Oscar. The real scary thing right now is Device just off, off to a phenomenal start over on the side of Astralis. And once again, <laughs> speak of the devil and he shall appear. Device opening up this round with two down in mid. And now Rops, the only man left inside of this A-bomb site. He really has his work cut out for him with four Danes about to walk his way. Rops in with two, almost a third. Will he be ready for the man out on Tetris? He is not, so Zipnix bailing his team out of this round. It started to turn against him. Now Stiko. Down in CT, hiding behind Ticket, trying to deny their entry Ooh. toward this bomb site. And Sunny now chiming in with another, so suddenly blink of an eye, it's down to Device. He's thrust into this 1v2. But that bomb, that bomb is Ticket on down. And Sunny, he just cleared this. He just cleared Connector. I don't think they're going to be all too ready for Device in this position. Him ticking down and device hidden away. The Deegan hand smoke falls onto the bomb. Device spots the first man. Stiko's on it. Stiko's sticking it. Device spraying through. Oh, it's been missed. Knife out. He's running in. And device. A seventh round as he holds his own in the 1v2 in front of the home crowd. My goodness. Oh. You got a bit worried there for a moment, but device, you know, cool as ever. I was getting flashbacks to that, that Guardian 1v2 yeah. <laughs> with the DPs. My goodness. That's got to hurt Malsports. No kit to play with at all in that round as well. And apart from Chris J, who got picked up on short earlier on, it wasn't retrieved because Sunny didn't want to go aggressive on short when rotating through the market. And boy, is that going to hurt Malsports. Look at the money. $2,000 a player. Astralis up on a seven round T side. They're about to make it eight and things go to plan. Glaive. How's he gotten here? How have Mouseports got no information? Even the connector peak wasn't enough. We do have Stiko deep in the B apartments, which gives him some info. But the A burst is ready to come through for Astralis. In fact, with them clearing B, they may back out of this position. We'll see. Dupree wanting to take the fight regardless. He lines up two. Quick entries is going to be good enough for Astralis. They might not rotate anyway. Despite them clearing out the B site, they've taken two on A. And Glaive, slowly but surely, still getting all the information. But this bomb is not going to hesitate. It will push out through the ramp. 
And in fact, Mouseboards have rotated down to this site that Glaive has already taken, but they're just not ready for him. Backstab from the in-game leader, and it's Stiko on the flank. Last man alive here for Mouseboards, but not for long. He'll join his team in the grave. Clean round for Astralis. They're so good at these anti-ecos. The Mouseboards have guns on the horizon. Yeah, they do finally have that orb out on Oscar in the side of Mouse, and Chris J going to be donning his as well. This is one of the reasons why this team is considered to be so deadly, is that orb duality between Chris J and Oscar. The one issue is, look at that scoreboard. Device 18 and 5, we're only 14 rounds in. He's already orping for two. He already counts as two orpers at this point. So Chris J and Oscar, they're going to have a tough time trying to counteract him. Chris smoked off down in window early on, and Astralis setting up once again over here toward this A-bomb site. They have been playing this very explosive, no respect style of CS. So they're setting up for it. Oscar, he does get smoked off from the connector. That allows Glaive to start to push on up, and Glaive has been very good at coming in on these late lurks, these backstabs, cutting off the rotations, finding crucial kills. The rest of Astralis... They'll be waiting for Device to be that first point of contact. And there he is, Dupree's with him. And Brothers in Arms, Glaive charming in with another now. Stiko, good for one, and Sonny almost with the flick. Zipnik's out from the balcony, him and Magis combined, and now suddenly only Chris J remains. Let's not write him out of this one just yet. He does get spotted down in the connector. And Chris, the flashes, it's all there. And Device. Continuing to pad those stats. And this is just a confidence play from Astralis. Look at that. They get a three on one. They get the bomb down. They don't fall back into post plants. They just chase the kill, Harry. They just flash the vice into it. When he's having a game like this, there's not much mouse sports can do. And a great execute from Astralis. So well timed with that connector split that the second we see mouse sports actually get away with a couple of kills, the trades are there. Astralis keeping that man advantage and running away with a round. Nine to five. Can they find double digits before the half ends? Chris J trying to peek out the scout, but this is a lot to ask for. It's not even going to be the AWP. Oscar's down on the shotgun, and Astralis, they're keeping up the pace, they're keeping up the heat. In towards Connector, Glaive's already found a kill, but Oscar, he trades back with the shotgun. He locks down that B site with some aggression through the apartment. Zipnix can't catch him through the smoke, and Sonny does exactly the same to Dupree. Outsports in a very, very strong position right now. They're still stacked up towards that B site, so rotations do need to come off, but... Sonny's going to move into position to try and lock down this connector, and that's exactly what's needed. With Rops alone in that CT spawn, a familiar position for him as Astralis creep up towards the jungle. Rops takes that peek, and he might wish he didn't. He does get the information. He spots the bomb, and this could be perfect for Sonny. He looks to come in on this backstab. They've got no clue that Sonny's here, and he's going to be able to deny the bomb plant now. We're just under a minute. It's only Device left standing, and Stiko deletes him. Some out sports. They dig deep. They find themselves a sick round on the back of what was it? Their, you know, one of their weakest buys into those rifle rounds at the end of the first half. The score, nine to six in favor of the Danes. That's still a respectable scoreline for Mouse Sports, but you do have to remember their CT side is far stronger than their T side when it comes to this map. The positive is, now that we move over to the terrorist half, it's going to be a chance for Oscar to be unleashed. If he's allowed to, he's currently seven and ten, bottom of his team. This was the man that carried Malsports through yesterday's quarterfinal up against Renegades. A key to their victory. Without him, well, there would have been no victory. So we're going to need him to dig deep and find some fire as we head into this second half. Otherwise, Astralis are going to be stealing away the map pick of Malsports. I mean, they've been off to a great start. You can see from some of these highlights, you know, especially Device, he's been looking so crisp. He's top of the board, 129 ADR, 16 and 9 from him right now. And over on the side of Mass Sports, it's Sunny leading the way, along with Stiko, an unlikely character to be coming in in that second place spot. We can see the head-to-head -head between Oscar and Device. You can see Device right now is outperforming him in every sector. Device has never even bought a, a sniper, Harry. He's just been picking them up off the body of Oscar. No need. Why buy it when you can get it for free? Let's find out what happens in this second half. It's a quick pistol for Mouseports towards Ramp and Majisk. He's got the info. He spots one. Now Astralis. Look at this stack. They have four players here. They have Glaive on the rotate. Mouseports try and burst out, but there's so many CTs in position. Great damage to Device will force him back, and Rops has taken the entry kill on top of that. Mouseports in a good spot, but do they expect to lurk Dupree underneath the balcony? He's found two, flashed up, doesn't give a damn, moving in for the last. 
But Device is going to steal it away as Astralis take this pistol down to the four on one. And with Jess Rops remaining, he's given up his position, and Astralis, the drums of war are calling, and Glaive going to be the man to cement this pistol out for Astralis. 10 to 6 now. Bomb doesn't go down for Mao, so they do likely just take the eco here, go for that buy up in the next, similar to what we saw Astralis do over in the first half. Astralis going to be moving up onto 11, you would imagine, unless something goes very, very wrong. And Astralis aren't too known for making mistakes. And this position for Doopy was so valuable because by that point, Mouse Sports has already spotted three players on the A site. There's no way you were going to expect a fourth under the balcony after that much info. So a really well-timed stack from Astralis gives them the surprise to Mouse Sports. Good nade up top mid as well. It's only an eco for Mouse Sports, remember. So this is not one that they should really be picking up anyway. And Astralis taking that mid control. What a shot from Chris J. He even drops device, no head armor. And that will come back to haunt him. Luckily enough, there's so many CTs here. Somehow Rops gets himself another. This is getting awkwardly close. Sunny damage as well. They've yet to retrieve these guns, so it's still in the favor of Astralis. But the next kill that comes through needs to be for this CT side, and it will. That's the bomb dropped. And Mouse Sports now, they're going to start to crumble. That being said, still a good eco regardless with two kills. And hey, Rops isn't done. Yeah, a minute left on the clock, though. He certainly has a long way to go. And Glaive, he's going to be the real problem. There's no way that Rops is ready for this as he starts to walk towards his death. Down in T-spawn, Astralis locking in another. Over in the Mouse Sports camp, that buy is available at the very least. That's one thing that they can take Solace in. And once again, the buy selecting to go for the Org. Over the Orb. He's been a big fan of it. Can't, I mean, it's working out for him very clearly, sitting top of the board. 121 ADR, still managing to keep up this spectacular performance is Device. Mouse Sports much faster out early on in towards mid. My goodness, those nades from Astralis going to do the damage. Tag up three players early on. And that is monumental when you're on these M4s. Going to bring them down to that one-shot headshot. I mean, in the case of Stiko, just one shot anywhere. <laughs> I mean, this is why Astralis are known as the best utility team in the world. Mouse Sports already losing so much damage. And they haven't even seen Astralis to try and counteract it. Majisk is the only man receiving anything in, in response. See that bomb rotate from Mouse Sports will be coming back in through the T spawn. Oscar's going to be primed and ready to come in through the underpass. He'll be splitting connector, maybe joined by Sunny as well. We constantly s see Sunny go for those late lurks. If Mouse Sports can get the bomb down, he can be such a fiend from the connector or the window, but that is a big miss. That smoke is going to give all the info to Astralis. You can see Dupree already peeking in to try and get the information on Oscar's whereabouts. Rop's trying to come out of the palace. He's been spotted. Clave jumps up to take him down, and the smoke, they'll run right through it. No dams given by Mouse Sports as they take a four on four, but surely they can't get into this bomb site with two players in CT. I mean, look at this call from Astralis. They're already rotating everyone over. All four players heading this way. So they're going to be here. They're going to be knocking on the door, Mouse, the second they try and get this bomb now. And even going as far to boost up Dupree. And as he peeks on over, what does he see? Smokes and flashes get him off the angle, but there's devices need to find Stiko, and that was the bomb. Now Sports have to try and get this down. And there's Dupree on the boost. Device got a wall bang, Oscar. Only Chris J left with Device. Shutting down absolutely everyone. 12 and 6. In favor of Astralis right now. And 23 kills up on Device. Harry, he has the most kills and the least deaths in the server. How do you stop this man at this point? How do you, like, what even is that? How do you stop that? Device is tearing Mouse Sports limb by limb. It's 12 to 6 here. Mouse Sports, couple of nades to try and catch out a mid play, but Astralis haven't gone for the traditional window setup. Just Device there. They've wrapped underpass very, very fast as well. This gives them so much information. Chris J gets up short, but not for long. We're just finding him. And just like that, Astralis are going to be picking apart Mouse Sports again. Another eco round, another one for Astralis. Seems like there's just nothing Mouse Sports can do. Yeah, I mean, it's Rob's left up in this lobby five. He's been pretty good at finding more than he should, but not when Glaive is there in the back. Last few times that they've... Uh, I guess the most recent time that we saw them play this up was at the ECS finals. 
And it was there that Astralis took it once again, but it was in a much tighter fa fashion, 16 to 14. Right now, Mouse Sports not really reliving that form. It was in that game, massive performance of Rops, if you recall. He looked fantastic throughout that series. And while he's looked decent, this is not, you know, the performance that you need to beat the world beaters. We've just not had a device on the mouse ball side. We've just not had one player to really go above and beyond. And now Astralis are even confident enough to smoke the top of middle and take it. Glaive throwing in his utility, trying to get a kill. Steko's going to shoot him through the smoke. There's a little gap in the corner. Glaive not going to be too happy with the result of that one. And this is how mouse balls can get back into the game, Harry. A man advantage. An important buy round, because without it, it's probably 14, then, you know, 15 down if mouse sports don't buy up. And so this really is a requirement of mouse sports want to pull this comeback. Round number 20. Astralis, they're going to start to play for information. This is what you've got to fear from if you're mouse sports. They're so boxed in at the top of middle. They have no map control for this T side. They're yet to even get out into mid, and Dupree's already there. His device clears out the palace. He either gets the information, the mouse sports probably aren't hitting A. But they don't rotate a player towards B to back that up. It is just one man, Zitnik's there, with no utility either. Smoke in the connector. And up short, mouse sports go. Will Astralis be ready for this? Well, it's not even Astralis. It is just, will Zipnix be ready for this right now? He's the only man here. Ooh. And Oscar is going to pick him up. So now in the three on five, Astralis, they like to play their numbers game. They're going to look to try and save. They do spot Sunny out. You don't imagine that tempts them to stick around and try and go for the retake. Sunny just trying to be that thorn in their side. And indeed, he is trying to send Astralis' economy back down into the doldrums. Our sports will be picking up this round as Device and Dupree just look to hold on to these weapons. Device can go ahead and throw that AK over to someone else in the team like Zitnix. Go ahead and buy himself the AWP in the next round. So a seventh round. Our sports trying to dig deep, trying to find success. And as they go on the hunt, they might come to wish they didn't. Losing Steeco. And from this point onwards, I don't really imagine we see them go all too much further. You don't want to risk Ooh. giving too much away. Yeah, if you're Mouse Sports, there's no real reason to hunt too heavily here. You've yet to even establish an economy. This is your first T-side round. You need every penny you can get, so four players staying alive is going to be extremely profitable for Mouse Sports. But it goes both ways. Astralis, they have money in the bank for days. They're going to be able to buy it for another rifle round. Get that AWP in on device. And what a demon he has been 24 and 7 right now. 118 ADR. Not too bad. No, I mean, that's the thing. He's been, a, he's been a real pillar of consistency for Astralis, both at this event and, at, you know, the last couple. Device really is trying to lock in that MVP of 2018 award. Now, Sports early on in this one, going to be grabbing control of middle. There isn't too much of a presence here for Astralis, so they do throw those nades in early on. That brings Sunny down low. It seems like every time Mouse Sports try and take mid, even if Astralis give it away to them, they get something, they get some damage, they get some info. Sunny's pushed down to 26 HP. And Mouse Sports just back out of mid. They go, okay, it's fine. We don't want it. Keep it. Let's hope they have the receipt. Setting up for a B execute here for Mouse Sports, but only one player in the apartments. That's actually a window smoke going down for Chris. And that's going to allow these two top mid players plus Sunny down in lower to split out through the middle portion of the map. Get this control that they were aiming for earlier in the round. Astralis will concede it. But that smoke, you can see how scared mouse sports are of it. If there's an Astralis player on the other side, you always have to be fearful. Molotov will force Majisk out, though. He's got to pick a position. He's got to move right now. He's getting tagged. 50 HP. They tried to push him into Oscar's AWP at the top of middle. And that's not going to happen because Oscar's uh, honed in on the window. But just gets a second chance at life, but Mouse Sports, they're running out of time. Yeah, they've only got 35 seconds left to play with. You really don't have too much room to maneuver if you are Mouse, wherever they do decide to go, which is going to be this B bomb site they have to stick at. And so now, as they start to creep on in, you're looking at Device and Zipnix here. And holding close. There's one, trying to go through. Steeko in with the trade, and now only Device, but he's looked very good. Steeko's gonna look a little bit better, though, on this entry. As he picks it up, the bomb goes down just in the nick of time, and three on three in the retake. Astralis now look toward Glaive, Magisk, and Dupree. Actually, they're just gonna go ahead and save. Interesting decision. Mouse Sports, they could have been reset if Astralis went for this round. Now, Astralis can still find their damage. They can still get into positions where they kill exiting players from the bomb site. 
but giving away the round to Mouse Sports, that shows some respect going both ways. Astralis, they'd rather keep their own economy in a good state. They'd rather get back into, uh, you know, get back into the next round and uh, get a bit of a later reset to Mouse Sports' money rather than risk it all here to be put to pistols. Because as said at the start of the round, this is how Mouse Sports can get back into it. If Mouse Sports reset Astralis there and took all the money away from them and gave them an eco, that's a chance for these T's to begin to warm up into the second half. And Astralis don't want to give it to them. Glaive finds two on the exit. Astralis will keep their guns, stick to them, and buy up once more. Yeah, that's it for Astralis here. Very, uh, very calculated in that sense, right? They're not doing it out of desperation. There was the game plan. You're trying to get Mouse Sports' economy down. And that's exactly what they did with Glaive at the end, finding two. Great stuff from Steeko in that round. They're not normally the man we look to see top in the charts from Mouse, although he's doing exactly that right now. Early damage onto him. Magis going aggressive here into the top of mid. Doesn't have any teammates nearby, and he knows it, so he doesn't get too overzealous. Now falling back down, backed up by Glaive. The issue is, Mouse, they're switching things up. They're changing the pace, and they're going to look to go barreling into this B bomb site. Zipnix here. Does spot the first man who gets out into the bomb site. That's Chris J leading the freight and opening up this round. Dupree still here with the orb though. They are about to cross towards bench. Mouse sports think otherwise. They have got short control, but Astralis have already started to go back for the save. Now, if Dupree gets a couple of kills, he may be convinced to go for it, but Astralis losing B so early on into the round will give it up to Mouse Sports. That's a great reaction from Mouse Sports. Astralis were pressuring the top of middle, so Mouse Sports knew that if there was going to be two players in mid, one of the sites had to be weak, and more commonly than not, it is going to be the B, uh, the B site. So with only Zipnix there, Mouse Sports go with the information, the Magisk is at the top, and just charge in through the apartments. And Zipnix... If he gets a couple of kills, maybe Astralis have a, a round win up their sleeve, but going down with no trade at all means Mouse Sports are going to guarantee that round. Five to four and 13 to nine. Slowly but surely, they're finding their footing, Harry. Yeah, they're making this a more competitive game, which, you know, we're all a big fan of getting to see these two teams play for that much longer. And a timeout now going to be called in for the Astralis guys. A little bit of time to try and mull over this one, try and figure out how to approach this round, make sure everyone's on the same page. They know that even though they are the best team in the world, you can still make mistakes. You can still have teams build back against you. There we go, the drums of war. You can hear it in the arena, trying to get some confidence behind the hometown team. Yeah, this needs a break now for Astralis. It's been three rounds in a row for Mouse Sports. Not a team you want to let get back into this matchup, especially on their map pick where they're going to be most comfortable. If Astralis can take away the map pick of Mouse Sports, then surely it's smooth sailing to the grand finals. But it's not over till it's over, Harry. And Mouse Sports have yet another chance. Astralis on the buy. AWP still here for device. Everything they need, really. Mouse Sports setting up for an instantaneous A execute, and there's only two players here, but Astralis, they can easily just give this site up, play for the retake, try and challenge that bench if you are Glaive. Majisk is here in the spawn as well, can jump up on that ticket and be a real nuisance to Mouse Sports, but the smokes fly in, and that'll force Astralis out. They've been completely cornered off from this bomb site, pushing on in, this wall of smokes keeping Astralis away, Ooh. and Glaive trying to find something through it. Ooh, he does tag Chris J, oh. there you go, he goes back. So now, Mouse Sports 4v5. They were going to send Sunny background on that ramp through mid, but they decide against it. Instead, doubling up this position down a ramp where the bomb is planted for. But Stiko, he goes for that push and he gets caught out in the open. So Astralis back into this retake glaive. Will get dealt with. Sunny's going to get spotted out. And now Rops and Oscar doing what they can. Suddenly, it's only Device and Oscar. That is very, very quick indeed. Mouse Sports. Picking themselves up another round on the back of just a fast A play. And Oscar's coming to life as well. Three kills on that AWP. If you're Astralis and you're on that T side, maybe you can shut out Oscar by keeping him out of the window room. Don't let him take cat control. Don't let him peek that connector. But if your mouse port's going for A executes on the terrorist half, Oscar's going to have so much room to play within that post plant. We saw the same thing versus Renegades just yesterday, and now Oscar's showing it again on Mirage. But credit where credit is due, when Mouse Sports actually hit that bomb site, they had three players before that initial kill tagged up by the utility of Astralis. Magist was throwing a nade from the CT spawn. There was a Molotov that hit, hit, hit Chris J while he was planting on triple. 
And so everyone was really low for Mal Sports. So a big play from Oscar was required to win that round. Now it's Astralis on the back foot, believe it or not. It's pistols in play, it's a bit of armor and utility. This from Clave, unbelievable. I mean, he's just so good at fighting stuff through spikes. It seems like all of Astralis are. But Oscar, this is, uh, this is something that's gonna make this game a lot more fun, is he's now starting to warm up. He's finding his footing, and he's looking to try and relive some of his big performances of this event thus far. Now, early on in mid, Device takes that fight on a Sunny, does find a bit of chip damage. Sunny, not deterred by taking a deep shot to the chest, keeps on pushing down towards the connector. But the rest of the boys, the rest of the Mount Sports guys, they're hitting this B-bomb site where Device is here with the Deagle. He's going to get found. Dupree over on short. Ooh, not going to be allowed to get that AK just yet as they Molotov him off the angle. And that Molotov allows for an open plant as well. They've got it down towards short, but that's exactly where Astralis are coming from. Now, the apartment's position is a good spot to hold off on this bomb plant, so Oscar's going to be there with the AWP. But here is the late lurk. Sunny loves to do this, especially on the A site plays. But this time, Astralis have already fallen back. There's only Dupree committed. However, he's got to escape from this position if he wants to guarantee the saving of his gun. Otherwise, Mousebots could exit up from short. You can see how hesitant they are. They'll go through the apartments. That's one position they already own. That's one area of the map they know is clear. So Mouse Sports don't want to take the fight. They'd rather just hold on to their weapons and get another guaranteed round. 11 on this T side. Five in a row for Mouse Sports. Putting the pressure on Astralis, whether they like it or not. They most certainly are. I mean, it's been quite the spectacle these last few. I mean, Five rounds consecutively now going the way of Maus. They're very much back into this one. Astralis, they're maybe starting to feel the pressure a bit now. A feeling they're not all too used to. Maus Sport's going to be setting up once again over here toward this A bomb site. Astralis this time with the double orbs. Is that what it's going to take to try and deter them? Magis certainly doesn't seem to think so as he finds one. Device in with another. Oh, from CT. Device laying down the pain. Just Eco and Sunny remain in this round. And they're going to get sent back from this A bomb site. They've lost everyone. Turn their attention back, but Device still awaits them. That beast rearing his head once again from CT. Now Sports just waiting, and Astralis. Patient as ever. Too keen on going hunting. They're playing this. They know they have themselves the man advantage. Now, Device, they start to creep on into him. He's been waiting patiently, and he'll get rewarded for it. His hat trick in this round. He's looking for number four, and Sonny might just offer that up. Double peek out from the stairs, and Sonny is getting toyed with. They're playing with their food at this point. Sonny might just have to back away, might just have to hold on to this rifle. Glaive. He's hunting him down. He's looking for it. He's hungry. And Astralis going to be picking up round 14. They break the streak. They break the curse. And it's Device once again lighting up the server. Mouse Sports just trying to play it slow down on ramp. Them sticking to their guns and holding that position is just hoping that Astralis will rotate off the bomb site. But even if they did, Harry, which they didn't, there's always Device and a spawn to deal with them. What an incredible round from him. He's really come into this day feeling great, and, and that is a, such a worry for Mouse Sports across this entire best of three series. Still the buy for Mouse Sports. That streak has allowed them to keep some money going. Fast B apartments approach here from the T side. Three players in position. Device is challenging short, so he knows they're not out on mid, but Stiko has already crossed before Device got into this spot. Oscar's yet to face out from middle on his end, and Sonny's coming in from the flank underpass, but he's not going to be able to find too much. Great wall bank from Stiko, but the favor is returned. Device hits a shot. The trace is given away Stiko's exact angle, and a need to even do further damage. Astralis picking mouse boards apart so far. Two players getting hit. 
Arsport's boosting up into the window. They won't commit for this. This allows Sonny to late play window rather than immediately give up the fact that he's here. Wait for Glaive to be spotted or killed. Molotov does land in there. Glaive trying to go for a bit of a fight. He's going to fall back and that'll make some noise. So Mouseports do know he's here. They don't want to commit towards a window just yet. They want to rotate their players to be. And that's exactly where Dupree sits. We haven't seen his second AWP challenge, but this man is so good with it. Tag to Chris J. And information off the back of that. He's got a smoke at his feet. Flashes over the top for Mouseports, but Dupree, he can hold them back for another 15 seconds with this smoke. He's actually even swapped. Sipnik has gone up on top as well. Now Dupree can just draw him in from the bench with 30 seconds left. Mouseports have to go for this. There's only two players here for Astralis, so if quick kills come in for Mouseports, this might just be their round. This might just be the reset, but Zipnik's on the other side. Flash bang through, Stiko's gonna be fully flashed. Sunny coming in on the flank, but Zipnik's mowing down two. That's the bomb. 15 seconds up for Mouseports. Is there anything they've got left in the tank? Surely not. As Zipnix hasn't even fallen off the balcony, and just as the time ticks away, Mouseports, their opportunity is gone. Kills are coming through. There's team kills in the midst of the madness, and Dupree will even pick up Oscar. The round's done. It's map point for Astralis. And what a way to arrive at it. They completely shut down that play from Mouse. Zipnik's fighting too, and you saw the second they try and run the gauntlet, they spot Dupree there with the orb. Sonny on that flank never quite materializes. And the, the problem for Maus, they're not just up against the best team in the world, they're up against a very, very loud arena as well that's rooting against them. I can't see an empty seat, Harry. 10,000 people. And I would be willing to bet 95% of them, if not more, are in favor of these Danes bringing the energy. Mouseports using their first tactical timeout, and to be honest, the first one coming in up against Matt Point, that's a bit of a danger for this T side. They have got enough to play with, not quite everything, no armor on Oscar. He's got to find one of those incredible rounds again if they're going to want to keep this alive. That was a complete mess in the apartments. Team kills coming through, Mouseports not even being able to exit past Sitniks. What a dangerous dynamic over on B, Astralis. One more round, it's Dupree up on catwalk, he's flashed off, that does let Stiko cross. Yeah, still holding down mid, and there's Oscar. Astralis sitting in round 27 with the man advantage, four frags is all that separates them from taking this first map and moving 1-0 up in this semi-final. Now, Rops is in with the trade, and what a man to find. You've taken down Device, the heavyweight on Astralis right now. Our sport's gonna try and turn their attention elsewhere on the map, leaving Rops up in Palace. Astralis completely rotating off a of mid, just anchoring two players in each one of these bomb sites. So this could culminate in a B play with how things are looking right now. Three players here for Maus. One thing that convinces me otherwise is that Rops still sitting pretty over on eight. Either you're gonna use him to try and cut off rotations or you throw a fake in here and then try and duck dive up through connector. Now, suppose they do have options. That much is sure, but they're gonna have some Dane stood between them and getting this bomb down. Dupree, this first point of contact, they walk on into it, but Sonny able to open things Ooh. up. It's Sipnix here, and effectively he's in a 1v3. Everyone else very far isolated from this site. These rotations are nowhere to be found just yet. So Zipnix, oh. you know he likes to clutch, but things get a little too hot and heavy for him. Only Glaive and Magis left standing, and Magis is on a very, very long rotation in through T-Spawn. Looks like they will just be electing to go for the save in this round, handing over that 12 to Mouse Sports. You can see how ready Mouse Sports were for that position from Zipnix. Three Molotovs used for one spot just to keep him in the corner. No chance for him to clutch out that B-bomb site in that position. Glaive, he's looking the wrong way, and goodbye. Sonny's gonna send him packing. Magist now left up in the palace, but this is unlikely that Mouseports will think this is the first position to check because Rops was just here seconds ago. As you can see, Sonny unaware, checking jungle, checking rap, anything but the palace. He's going to get away with his gun. But Mouseports, most importantly, they get away with another round, Harry. They keep this map going. As you said, recently playing this map back at ECS, it was a 16-14 to Astralis. Still a possibility for Mouseports to pull this one to overtime if they want to break the curse.
Yeah, and I tell you what, if one team has kind of been pretty good at at least stretching these games out versus Astralis, it has been Mouse Sports. And it must be a real conflicting matter for everyone in the arena because they love watching Astralis play, but they also want them to pick up the win, so you get to have a bit of both. Let's see. Device down here in mid has one of the orbs in this round. Dupree, Don in the other. But what they don't know is Stiko. He's been very good at getting up and past this initial man who peeks down into mid. Device doesn't know that he's here. That smoke raining in. I don't think he saw the trajectory, so still shouldn't be all too aware, but now he pulls off instead, focusing on lower tunnels. The timing's near on perfect, because Sunny starting to creep his way. Flash gets thrown in from top mid. That was courtesy of Oscar. Forces Device off the angle. You can see he goes rotating back into CT now. Leaving Glaive to take up his mantle at Connector. Oh, but there's a pick. Dupree just pushed to the apartments. He just got a frag to Chris J. That's a massive man advantage, and it frees up a lot of the map here for Astralis. They're going to rotate that secondary orb around. Zipnik's now able to play that solo B position with a pistol, and Dupree, he's coming in from the window, but look at Sunny. Look at that creep. He's up, crawling around in the window room. Dupree has no idea just yet, but he's still got a very favorable position on this angle. If he sticks to his guns, Glaive moves to middle. That's when Stiko strikes. 35 seconds on the clock. Sunny, he's gonna go for it. That timing, Dupree walks away. That's an entry. Magis will defend the A site with his life, but this is when the push run comes through the connector. 30 seconds, that bomb's going back to B, and Sunny, he's holding down the rotations right now. It is Zipnix once again. He's dropped the bomb, and now there's a chance. 15 seconds left on that clock. They've got to pick up the pace, and Zipnix, he's done it again. That might be enough to get them to 16 rounds. Zipnix shows up. And oh my goodness, what a way to do it. He's left alone over towards B, and he holds his own over towards B. Zipnix on his own, that's where he's most comfortable. The CZ player playing a solo B site with three kills, shutting down Mouseports, and it's the time that comes back to haunt them. 16 to 12 on the pick of Mouseports. Astralis will run wild. Second map going to be coming up after. That's going to be Inferno, but we know how good Astralis have been at that map. Oh, most certainly, they've looked great. If they can keep this format, we can see Device continuing that fashion, and things are going to go from bad to worse for Mouse Sports. We have to see that recovery. We have to see them dig deep to try and step back up, because my goodness, the Astralis boys, they're here to play. So many reasons for it. Intel Grand Slam title up for grabs, as well as this home crowd rallying behind them. We'll be back with the second map after the break. Hey, hey, hey.